Thank you very much. Uh, very excited to be here. And uh, I guess I can uh, show my screen and we can jump right in. Cool. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, this talk is sort of a follow-up or to kind of extend the scope of us for Microsoft explaining about the adaptation of Zik for Windows. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit more today about uh, kind of the motivation, uh, more from the, I would say, content or research side, and also to present some use cases that we have for Zik at Microsoft. Uh, and uh, hopefully this will uh, kind of complete the bigger picture of, of this uh, new and exciting thing that we have uh, introduced. So uh, looks like my uh, machine is getting stuck a bit, but all right. So uh, about myself, you pretty much uh, uh, presented everything, but just in a word, uh, I'm now working on Microsoft CDR. Previously, I've spent a lot of time, a couple of years working IR engagements. This is where I got most of my uh, knowledge and passion to actually protecting real organizations from real attackers. And uh, I can honestly say that my greatest passion is endpoint and network security, and uh, hope that I can also bring this into the talk. So uh, today, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, why we as an EDR group even decided to kind of bet on network telemetry and to invest more effort in that. And within that context, why we ended up choosing Zeek and specifically uh, doing the ambitious effort of having Zeek deployed on as many endpoints on the environment as we can. And then I'm going to discuss the specific use cases that we have for Zeek. And hopefully those can give some ideas for organizations that either don't use Zeek at all or use Zeek with the more, uh, I would say, uh, classic deployment of having uh, centralized appliance, appliance doing the, the analysis. And uh, I promise to leave some time at the end for questions, so please write down everything that you are interested in and also in the Slack, and I'll try to answer everything that I can. Cool. So uh, actually, one of the things that personally I uh, battled with uh, in my mind is that I saw many organizations uh, in my previous experience that do not utilize any network telemetry at all. They have very good security posture. They have very good EDR deployment. Almost every device is protected and up to date. So, and they didn't uh, actually do any traffic analysis uh, of network traffic. So the question is, are these organizations missing anything out? And to me, uh, at least the answer is obviously yes, but I wanted to try and break it down a little also to understand uh, for us internally at Microsoft why we are doing this this kind of, uh, of change and, and adapting the, the Zeek to run on Windows. So first of all, when we are looking at malicious activity detection, uh, to simply put it, EDR is very good. It became an industry standard, but it's not enough at this point. There are a lot of reasons for that, but I want to just uh, put a spotlight on a few of them. First of all, if you look at what a classic EDR is doing, it mainly looks at OS level activity, process activity, file activity, it might hook some process uh, level APIs, like when someone is using a DNS API or with Windows using SMB or RPC API. Uh, so it could detect activities that way. But we do see a lot of attackers today bringing their own network stack into the environment. And it doesn't have to be anything too complicated. They could simply have a Python script or tool. And even a lot of the open source uh, available attacker tools implement their own higher level protocols like DNS, RDP, SMB, or whatever they're using to, uh, to perform the malicious activity. So a machine which has such a tool running, uh, might not, it might not be, be that easy for the EDR to know that there is an SMB traffic going on or what, what happens inside the traffic or that some tool is uh, sending out uh, NTLM traffic. So when it comes to that case, we can see the great benefit that actually analyzing the traffic can uh, tell us much more about what's going on with that uh, machine. Secondly, attackers are very used to uh, kind of living alongside EDRs and with Microsoft C, almost all attack groups kind of having these uh, very diverse tools to disable and to tamper EDRs. And one of the goals that uh, we believe every organization should have is to layer up as much, uh, as, uh, as much security layers as they can so also looking at the network events and actually analyzing the traffic the fastest is another very good component that attackers will also need to find out how they can uh, prevent themselves from being caught that way. 
And it's also, if we think about the network layer, it's kind of this bottleneck that's very hard for attackers to hide in because eventually they could hide the process being created. They could hide in a, I don't know, a legitimate DLL flow, DLL load uh, flow in the machine to make it uh, the activity seem more legitimate. But at the end of the day, when they jump from one machine to another, they have to write packets on the wire. So it's kind of this medium where it's a bit more difficult to hide. And uh, lastly, um, most organizations have at least some portion of the devices which just cannot be protected by EDR, whether those are legacy devices that are not supported or IoT devices that are not supported. And when we think about those devices, one of the most interesting pieces of telemetry that we can get to learn about how they are behaving is to see the communication they are sending and receiving in the network. So this is another great motivation to actually utilize network telemetry. Now, this was all just in the scope of malicious activity detection, but there are two additional scopes which we believe are very interesting. Uh, first one is uh, the raw telemetry that we can aggregate over time and use this for a post-pitch investigation. In many of the IR cases I've handled, uh, not having this network telemetry was a big challenge. And in the few organizations that did have a robust infrastructure for both uh, analyzing and aggregating network telemetry, it was so easy to just track to see what the attacker was doing to understand the story of what they were trying to do in the network. And uh, basically this type of telemetry, imagine having all NTLM authentications over the wire, all Kerberos authentications over the wire. It's a gold mine for analyzing uh, post-breach activity. And uh, lastly, another use case, which is a bit niche and uh, specifically for Zeek, it's a bit niche, device discovery. When you're looking at the traffic going in and out of a device, you can learn a lot about the purpose of that device in the network and also what software is installed on it. But I'm going to go a bit into it uh, later. So at this point, I hope that we agree that uh, network telemetries are interesting. And I want to talk a bit about why we chose Zeek and what are the advantages that we see in Microsoft with having it deployed on uh, most endpoints in the environment. So there are a lot of reasons for choosing Zeek, and I just want to uh, highlight a few of them. First one is the dynamic protocol detection. Uh, from our experience, in many cases, both attackers and organizations are using non-standard ports for uh, communication. So having the ability to detect protocol regardless of default ports is crucial in that case. Secondly, the ability to have a robust scripting environment that allows us to change the behavior of the network analysis platform without having to rebuild the entire executable or to make any complicated changes and having kind of this uh, very mature scripting la language. This is another huge plus, which is why uh, we decided to go with Zeek. And uh, last but not least, it's a very long time running open source project. It's very well maintained. There is a great community. Uh, we are just the new kids in the neighborhood, but we're very excited to join and kind of contribute and see this product grow uh, together and to be able to participate as much as we can. So we see Zeek, uh, it has a very good and long history. We, we see it. Uh, becoming, uh, continuing to, to be great in the future. Uh, thanks for the, the, the great community. So these are uh, in general, the reasons why we, we went with Zeek. And I want to uh, talk if, about a few advantages that we uh, can see when we have Zeek deployed on endpoints. If we think about the classic Zeek deployment, then you probably have one or two or three uh, devices, maybe appliances, maybe dedicated servers, that actually uh, connect to some network taps. They have a few core links flowing into them and they do all of the analysis. They might raise some alerts over time or they might forward the, uh, the logs to another location. And this is uh, what I would uh, refer to as kind of the classic Zig deployment. And when we have this type of deployment, we have a possibility for a few visibility gaps that could be significant in some cases. So uh, the first one is that we essentially only see the specific network links that we chose to fall to that centralized device. So if we have, for example, some two uh, remote sites that are connected between them and they don't go through the core network, any communication between these two won't end up getting analyzed. But more interestingly, uh, in pretty much most cases, all of the intra-subnet traffic, every traffic which is within the subnet itself, won't get analyzed because the loop is closed within probably within a physical switch and doesn't get forwarded. And we also have cases where we have a hypervisor device that has 
a lot of VMs on it, and all of these VMs can communicate between one another without leaving the physical machine. So if you imagine uh, a server subnet that has the most critical servers in the environment, then this could be a quite significant visibility gap in some cases. Now, other than visibility, there is also a chance for better correlation of source and destination device when you have Zeek running on endpoints. So when we have the deployment, uh, the centralized deployment, we probably see it between two core routers. We see source and destination IP addresses. The MAC addresses probably don't mean too much because they belong to, to the two routers we are uh, sitting between. And uh, when we see something that is malicious or suspicious and we want to investigate, we need to go and figure out which machine actually held the source and destination IP address at the time of the activity. Now, in theory, it sounds like a pretty easy task, but uh, at least from our experience, this could be very challenging in a lot of organizations. I would say the most common uh, case is for that to be quite a challenge and not to be very trivial. Uh, there are a lot of cases for that, starting from just strange network configurations to a uh, very quick uh, change of IP addresses with DHCP, uh, up to, uh, I also saw many cases where organizations had actually overlapping subnets. The two areas in the network had uh, the same subnets that just weren't going through the same uh, routings. So it's quite a challenge actually to go and figure out which machine held an IP address at a given time. And when we have Zeek deployed on endpoint, we can uh, with 100% confidence know at least one side of the communication. So if, if it's an outbound communication, then we always know who the source machine is. If it's inbound, we always know who the destination machine is because we actually have the Zeek sensors on that device and we know uh, what machine send us uh, this data. And if we think about uh, intro subnet traffic, we also have the MAC address of the actual device that communicated with us, which can allow for a higher uh, level of confidence with the correlation of device. And lastly, we can also think about having Zeek run on many different endpoints as kind of a load uh, distributed uh, designed for traffic dissection. So if we have just one or two core devices that take in all of the traffic, they might not be able to catch up with the load and the amount of traffic that passes through them. But whenever machine carries its own load, we can get to a higher throughput overall of traffic analysis across the entire network. So uh, this is just to give some insights uh, to our motivation at Microsoft to actually use network telemetry as part of VDR and to integrate uh, Zeek and to have Zeek running on Windows. And now I want to go over uh, some of the specific use cases that we have for Zeek. So first use case that we have is device discovery and classification. And also in this case, I think an interesting question is why do we need to invest effort in that? Uh, is it really worth our time? So we believe at uh, Microsoft that device discovery and classification is actually a key component of a network uh, of an organization security stack. First of all, it gives us very important context for uh, malicious activity detection. So if we think about, for example, a Windows server that is trying to authenticate to a bunch of other machines in the network, let's say it's trying to authenticate with some user and the authentication fails, it could very easily be a false positive due to some password change or some legitimate process in the network. But if we see the same behavior coming from an IP camera or a smart TV, then uh, at least in my book, uh, it should raise a lot of red flags. So context means a lot when you are securing a large and complicated enterprise network and knowing the identity and the purpose and the role of a device is very important to be able to uh, prioritize the alert and trash them uh, uh, the best way possible. So this is one, I'd say, uh, main reason. The other one, is that uh, it's very critical for posture and vulnerability management. Um, in, I can actually say that in most of the IR incidents that I've uh, uh, participated in, there was at least a few devices that the attackers used to stage the attack that were some legacy system that when we showed uh, the victim organization what happened with these systems, they were like, wait, this should have been decommissioned in 2017. What's going on? This system should not be uh, alive anymore, but due to you know circumstances of life, someone forgot to actually decommission it and take it offline, or due to convenience, some old legacy stuff gets uh, left uh, online. So being able to know exactly the full scope of devices that you have in the environment is important to know what you need to protect. 
but uh, for vulnerability management, we also need to know some more specific information, like the exact piece of software that is installed, because, I mean, you just can't patch software if you don't know that uh, the version is outdated. Um, and uh, the idea is essentially to uh, get to the highest level possible of knowledge of every IP address, every machine that is performing communications in the network, every device, to know as much information as possible about it, including a specific version and subversion of every software that's running on it. So this is like the, um, the vision, but in practice, it's difficult to get that far. So, um, but I believe that all organizations should try to do as much as they can in that area. Now, when it comes to Zeek, uh, although Zeek wasn't created for this purpose, quite uh, interestingly, Zeek's capability are extremely suitable for this case. And it, um, it's mainly related to the fact that many of the out-of-the-box uh, supported protocols already extract and, and, and uh, Zeek can already uh, take out all of the information that is relevant and interesting for the device discovery. So for us, this was a big plus and a big win for Zeek. And uh, I just want to go over a few examples to kind of uh, give more uh, context to, to these statements. So I want to start with NTLM. Actually, NTLM is one of the best protocols for discovering Windows devices in an environment. Uh, some would say, unfortunately, but it's still quite in uh, wide use. And we do see a lot of machines still communicating with NTLM. And if you think about it, a lot of the devices that you would want to discover are actually these uh, maybe out of domain or maybe legacy machines that are not part of the corporate environment. So those will probably be communicating with NTLM. So uh, we can actually look at, at an example with that. Uh, within the NTLM authentication procedure, we have two very important pieces of information, which I would say that are the two critical ones when it comes to uh, knowing about a machine and having the, the correct information about the machine. First one is the version. With Windows, we can get the NT version, major and minor, which gives us the uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the kind of distribution of that machine. And we also have the build version. Now, the build version is important because in Windows, there are several different versions that share the same NT version. So Windows 11 and Windows 10 are both NT 10.0. But if you also have the build number, you can actually differentiate between those two. Same goes for server and workstation variants. So having both the anti version and the build, that's uh, practically most of the information that you need to know which version of Windows is running on the device. And other than the version, we can also get the name, the NetBIOS name and domain name, and DNS name and domain name, which of course are not always the same. And actually the name is like the most human readable identifier you can have for the device. So just like for having the uh, the security team recognize the device and understand if they think that it's expected to see that device in that uh, network or not. So having the name is, is very important. It's not always easy to get. Um, so this is what we can get from NTLM. And if we look at Zeek, Zeek actually passes out all of this information and we only had to make slight modifications in the script itself to make sure that this data also gets logged. So practically uh, supported out of the box. Next up is SSH. With, the, with SSH, whenever a session is being set up, the server sends back a specific protocol version string, which in many cases includes very interesting information, like we can see here, the uh, specific SSH server version, major and minor uh, uh, version. So we can go and look that up and see if there are any known vulnerabilities for that to see if we need to patch it. We also see that we can get the uh, OS distribution in this case. And also, as you can see down low, this is fully supported by Zeek, completely uh, out of the box. So we only had to kind of make sure the SSH script and the analyzer are loaded, and we started getting this information from Zeek. And uh, lastly, FTP, which is a bit similar to, to SSH, whenever a session is being set up, then uh, the server is sending back a string which identifies it. So it might contain the model of the machine, the type of the machine, uh, the name, the operating system information. Uh, it, it differs between different implementations, but overall, it almost always contain, contains very interesting information. Same for this case, uh, supported out of the box with Zeek. We just had to make a slight modification to the script to make sure that this uh, initial response from the server is getting logged 
uh, in the script itself. So this is just to give some examples about uh, device discovery. And just one more point, NTLM is more useful for discovering Windows devices, but actually FTP and SSH are much more valuable when it comes to IoT or different, uh, different Linux devices. So uh, again, this is just to kind of highlight and give an example about one of the uses, use cases we, we have uh, for Zeek at Microsoft. And this is something we are already using. So we are uh, collecting these different uh, banners and the, the different information. We are correlating them with the devices that we uh, see and identify within the network. All right. So the next use case is uh, the most obvious one, which is malicious activity detection. And uh, this is the bread and butter of Zeek. Uh, no other words to put it. There's tons of community content available, which made this uh, very um, uh, uh, with a lot of made Zeek uh, uh, kind of a platform with a lot of potential for us because there's a lot of stuff that you can start playing with and give value to to organizations from day one. But there's also, uh, in my view, it's like unlimited opportunities for custom content which organizations can uh, define for themselves with their specific use cases. So really, pretty much uh, unlimited potential for that. But I want to uh, talk a bit more about the detection approaches when we have Zeek running on endpoints in comparison to having Zeek running on uh, a centralized device. So the most straightforward approach, I would say, is to have uh, what we call the on-device uh, script logic, which essentially means that you have Zeek running on some machine. It's processing the packets. Uh, it has of scripts running that are uh, processing the events that the analyzers are sending out from these, uh, from the processing of that traffic. And in case it sees some uh, sequence of bytes or in case it sees some sequence of RPC calls or whatever, it will raise a notice log and we know, hey, something happened with this device, we need to check it out. But um, in this approach, we won't actually be able to get to the full potential of Zeek because every machine will only see its own traffic and we won't be able to get to uh, what I would call bigger picture conclusions. And this is where we uh, also integrate off-device telemetry correlation, which essentially means that we can forward all of the events that are being generated on a device, whether these are Zeek or and also non-Zeek events, and send them to some other centralized log processing machine. For example, it could be some Splunk server where all of the events are being aggregated into, and we can run all sorts of logics over there. So um, I want to give one more concrete example of, of that. And this is actually one of the first detections that we have implemented, um, or to put it more correctly, we've integrated because it was already uh, ready to use. And that is the detection of print nightmare. Now, in a world, print nightmare is a vulnerability that's a couple of years old. Uh, it allows an attacker to install a malicious driver on a remote print server essentially providing RC, remote code execution, and privilege of escalation. It was a pretty big deal when it came out. And unfortunately, we still see a lot of organizations that are not yet uh, fully patched against that. And this is why we uh, decided that this will be the first one. Now, if we think about Print Nightmare from the network perspective, it's actually this entire mechanism of installing a driver remotely. It's a legitimate feature, and it's implemented by RPC. So the way for us to know that this happened over the network is to look at specific RPC calls that indicate the attempted use of this feature. So if we imagine a device running with, have, with Zeek on it, it sees an RPC call and it says, hey, wait, I think that someone is trying to uh, put nightmare me, help. Um, so that's all right, but it does have some gaps. Uh, specifically, it lacks fail or success context. So we can't really know in some cases whether the RPC call was successful or not just by looking at the network data, but it also lacks false positive or true positive differentiation, meaning that this is after all a valid legitimate feature and people, IT admins are using it to install print drivers remotely. So it could also be a false positive. There are cases like that. And just to give an example, we can look at a packet capture of uh, trying to print nightmare a patched machine and we can see that at the bottom, there is an, the, the RPC request with the async at print driver, and you also see the RPC response. 
but the content is actually encrypted. So we can't know whether the response is, yeah, sure, I'll install the print driver, whatever, or whether the response says, sorry, it's not available anymore, uh, can't help you. And uh, this is uh, what we see when it comes to not being able to differentiate between failed or successful attacks. So what we can do in this case is to also integrate endpoint telemetry about file operations, process operations, and so on. And this can help us with these two differentiations. Uh, so again, let's say we have Sysmon on that device that uh, collects the uh, more EDR style information. We can let it go and integrate the print night node detection with additional uh, information from the device. So for example, on the left side, we can see how it looks like when we uh, attack a device with mini cuts that's actually vulnerable. We can see that actually uh, spool SV is creating some DLL. Then we see that it's creating a new process, uh, which doesn't seem to be uh, related to anything that this process is normally expected to do. And on the right side, we can see a false positive where we actually install uh, a remote driver. So this would be probably that we can uh, something that we can look at and say, okay, this looks legitimate. We might want to check uh, the in file or the actual driver files to to make sure. But eventually, having the endpoint data allows us to get much more context about the network activity and to understand the bigger picture. And uh, obviously, we might not see anything. I mean, which means that the attack failed. So someone tried to print night mode this device, but nothing ended up happening with the printer. Uh, executable, the print server executable. So we know that we're in the clear for this device, but we might want to look at whoever tried to, to use this RPC call. So um, that's basically uh, it for this use case. And uh, I just want to go over some quick conclusions before we uh, jump to the questions part. So from our perspective at Microsoft, Zeek is an extremely powerful platform, not only for device, uh, not only for uh, malicious activity detection, but also for uh, discovering devices within the network. And Zeek for Endpoint provides some pretty unique vo uh, value over the more classic centralized deployments. First of all, we can get intra subnet visibility. We can get a better correlation of endpoint devices, and we can get a higher throughput of traffic analysis over uh, the entire network. And uh, finally, we very strongly believe that, well, essentially any network detection, but specifically Zeek detection, can be significantly enhanced by combining other non-network telemetry. And this is what we are doing in Microsoft. And we uh, recommend any organization that uh, uses Zeek to uh, try to, to do the same to the best extent possible. All right, so uh, those are basically uh, my slides. And uh, I guess we have some time for questions now. Thank you so much, Boaz. Great to see you. Okay, yes. folks, questions. We're gonna go uh, we're gonna go a little bit over so that we can get everybody's questions in. Hopefully you have some. Crickets. Come on, folks. Okay. Uh, hi, thank you for the, the great talk. This is really interesting and exciting uh, work that you guys have done. Um, I'm kind of wondering like what are the trade-offs that you guys kind of thought about while thinking about capturing packets from the network or maybe just hooking additional API, APIs and MDE or something like that to, to provide some of the similar information and kind of what the trade-offs um, between those decisions were? Yeah, it's, it's a very good question, actually. Um, I'd say that uh, Zeek and, and, and in general looking at traffic uh, packet and at, uh, traffic uh, analysis was a bit more easy to integrate than to add some hooks to additional things. But also there are some things that you uh, probably won't be able to as easily hook and then you need to do some uh, processing logic, possibly in the kernel, which is much more complicated. So if we think about the scenario of uh, bring your own network stack, we can even think about Print Nightmare, then uh, there are many uh, C-sharp implementations and Python implement implementations where uh, actually, the RPC is implemented within the Python script or within the C Sharp uh, tool. So it's not that easy to go and to hook the RPC API because they are actually just full implementations of the protocol within that tool. And this is something that you won't really be able to, to hook onto when it's being used. Uh, what you could do is to try to you know, hook uh, maybe the TCP IP API uh, of the machine and to do this processing 
maybe in the kernel. So these are also directions that uh, we thought about, but it has tremendous complexity. And Zik is something that we could integrate much faster to, to get this value uh, to customers as quickly as we can. Okay, others? Ah. Thanks for the great talk. Uh, in addition to the, um, you know, contributions to to the Zeek engine that you guys are doing, uh, do you have any plans or thoughts about contributing some of the detection scripts that you might write now or in the future to the open source community? Yeah, uh, definitely. We see ourselves, uh, again, as kind of the, the new kid on the block, and we uh, plan on, you know, integrating as much as we can with the community, both to learn about new scripts and new detection that other people are, are writing and also to share our stuff. So uh, it probably won't be like, you know, uh, sharing 100% of the things, but uh, for sure, we plan to be an active member of the community and to, I mean, personally for me, I would like to share as much as possible. I know this is the approach of other people in the team. So I guess uh, this will probably set uh, the tone for uh, what comes next. I have to say, personally, I'm really excited to have you guys as the new kid on the block, but you're not going to be able to wear that hat very long. So just be forewarned. One more moment. I had Vince's question, and I love the answer. Thank you. It led to another one. We're going to be talking about the roadmap for Zeke coming up in a couple of hours. So um, as the new kids on the block, do you have any requests or suggestions, any um, problems either in the feature capability set or the documentation that you would suggest the team might work on? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, I think that as we go on, we'll probably have a lot more stuff. But uh, for me personally, one of the most things that kind of keep me up at night, and it's not only related to Zeek, it's in general for securing networks, is uh, having encryption implemented. So on one hand, it's good to have encryption, but on the other hand, uh, attackers are taking advantage, advantage of that and a lot of stuff that we see in the network now is fully encrypted. So if I imagine kind of the future of, of network traffic analysis, I would want to have kind of maybe an API in Windows that uh, most software developers use to communicate and uh, we can maybe uh, hook Zik into that and be able to you know get visibility into the things that attackers might be doing to hide themselves. So I know it's like not uh, the roadmap for tomorrow, but this is like the, the vision that I'm uh, concerned about personally. Uh, but, you know, more uh, near future steps, I guess we'll have to uh, kind of, uh, you know, experience Zeek for a little while longer to have some more concrete sug suggestions there. Great question. Thank you. Others? Come on, guys. I need to get my steps in today, please. That's it. Ah, uh, okay, wait, two more questions. Okay, I'm gonna give it to Christian and then come back to you. Hold on, Boaz, I'm running. I'm here. It's There's not no actually from, from Slack, it's just uh, one of my own. Um, I was curious if you had considered already integrating Zeek with your um, host local eventing that is built into Windows, because this, this, this has sort of long been a historic sort of you know challenge for us that there's been this idea that we could just tap into host-based eventing, but there was this chicken and egg problem where we couldn't really get a, a footprint on a lot of machines other than you know us academics, and now you guys are here, and hey, there is a couple million of those, so we could do a lot of stuff. Um, so is this something you have considered in the past? Are you talking about non-network telemetry or other Correct. like network? Correct, not the network, basically host native activity. Yeah, so uh, the current approach that we uh, take strictly from, you know, uh, trying to get value out as, as much as possible, uh, as soon as possible, is to, again, ship everything to the cloud and then do all the processing there. So we look both at the kind of host-only telemetry as in parallel to the network one. But future thinking, I think that being able to do some correlations on the endpoint itself is going to be uh, a very significant ability. So, like, not in the near future, but I do... Uh, see it as a possibility for the future, for the longer term future, I would say. Great, thank you. Okay, we have one more from a repeat offender, hold on. All right, uh, hello again. Um, I guess I'm also curious what the integrations with MDE are, are gonna look like going forward. Um, is it gonna be 
uh, pretty straightforward to go from some type of log event generated by Zeek back to like the process tree in MDE or something like that at, at some point? So that, that's a good question. There are a few challenges there. Um, we do aim to get to that point. We don't have a kind of specific uh, ETA for that, but uh, there is a lot of correlation. I mean, like having this correlation happen on the endpoint itself is something that's going to take a bit longer due to many technical reasons I won't go into, but we do try to do this correlation in the cloud. So we have like the metadata of which process opened which uh, connection. So in the cloud, we can correlate the Zig activity with that to get the link between the process and, and the Zig activity. So uh, we do, we'll do a best effort, best effort approach at first, and we hope to have like, you know, a fully airtight solution in the future, which does this, you know, on the machine itself and not in the cloud. Okay, thank you. So any other questions? So I know you're excited about plugging into our community, Boaz, but if there's any way that we could also plug into yours and things happen at Microsoft, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, because we'd love to also evangelize open source and Zeek within Microsoft. Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, actually, I, I also have to share this that uh, so many people within Microsoft, once they heard about this, have reached out to me directly and saying, hey, I have this really cool idea where we, we can use Zeek for this and this, and it's super exciting also for us internally. So uh, I hope to be able to share, you know, some uh, official features that are going to be coming out soon. But there's a lot of excitement also at Microsoft internally, and this is definitely the first step of many of, of working together. So yeah, re really exciting stuff. Wonderful. Thank you. Any last questions, folks? All right, I'm going to go up on stage because the AV guys are like, it's only like a dark podium up here. I'll, I'll use this one. How's that? I'm going to just drive the AV team crazy a little bit right now. Thank you, Boaz, um, very much. Um,